T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Flight control, we have no confirmed. I have two obsessions in life, eating good food and saving the planet. Now, the eating good food part makes sense. I was born and raised in Belgium, the land of waffles, fries, chocolate, and we spent a fair bit of time thinking about food. So just to give you an example, after I moved to the US, my sister came to visit, and she called me at work at 10 a.m. on a very busy day to ask me what we were going to eat for dinner. And when I told her that I hadn't given it any thought, I'm guessing she first thought, whoa, she's lived in the US for way too long. And then she probably did not understand. Just like my sister and my family in general have never really understood why I've been so obsessed about wanting to save the planet. I've always been deeply concerned about climate change, deforestation, species extinction, and I've always known that I wanted to do something about that. The opportunity presented itself when I learned about the issue of food waste. I could not believe how much food we waste as a society and the environmental impacts of wasting all of that food. And I knew I had to do something about it. The United Nations estimated that 30% of the food we produce worldwide is wasted. That's like taking three warm, crispy, delicious Belgian waffles and putting one in the trash, which, first of all, is probably illegal in Belgium. <laughs> but also, why would you do something so outrageous? And yet, we throw perfectly good food every day. Food is wasted throughout the supply chain, from farm to fork. But today, I'm going to focus my talk on two actors that waste a lot of food and that's supermarkets and consumers. Let's start with the supermarkets. Picture yourself entering your grocery store. You see the produce aisle, and the rows and pyramids of perfect produce, like these perfect apples, all the same, same shape and size. Now, if you've ever gone apple picking or had an apple tree gone to a farmer's market, you know that that's not how apple come in nature. There are small ones, big ones, so, have you ever wondered, hmm, what do they do with all these imperfect apples? Truth is, anywhere between 10, 20, 30, 40, sometimes 90% of a given crop never makes it to a supermarket. There are a host of reasons for that, one of which is they are not conforming to our idea of perfection. So, Let's move on from the produce aisle and let's walk through the supermarkets and picture the rows and rows of items and the abundance of options that are available to you. And until COVID, when was the last time you saw an empty shelf at the supermarket? Doesn't happen. So here again, have you ever wondered, do they sell all this stuff? And if not, what do they do with it? Well, a lot of it gets donated to food banks, but a lot of it also, for a variety of reasons, ends up in the landfill. But let's leave the supermarket for a second, and let's go home. You go home, you're in front of your refrigerator, you open it, and if you're like a lot of people, you're probably thinking, huh, I'm not really sure what's in there. Could be because you were just at the supermarket and you were tempted by a sale buy one, get one. You knew you really were only going to eat one, but the other one was free, so you took it. Never ate it, you tossed it. Or you're confused by expiration dates. Best buy, use buy, sell buy, what does that even mean? So when the date on the packet has been reached, out of an abundance of caution, you toss it. Or you went out to eat and you were given too many fries, which to a Belgian is kind of inconceivable. <laughs> you felt guilty, and so you took them home, 
and but you know that french fries do not reheat very well although you can put them in the oven but you did not feel like turning your oven on so you toss them overall consumers in rich countries like the us countries in europe australia waste 222 million tons of food every year that's more food than is wasted by supermarkets and restaurants now this is a series about climate change and you might be thinking okay why is this woman going on and on about food waste what does that have to do with the climate it has everything to do with the climate because wasting food causes greenhouse gases to be released let me tell you how you know the last time you bought one of these bags of pre-washed lettuce and the type that goes kind of slimy and brown after two to three days so you put it in the trash thinking it's organic matter it's gonna decompose right well guess what it does not or at least not in the way that you think that head of lettuce is gonna take 25 years to decompose in a landfill if you had tossed it on a compost pile it would be gone in a few weeks this is because landfills are not designed for food to decompose they're designed to keep things in so they get capped with layers of glass or other materials and that prevents oxygen from being able to help food decompose so while that lettuce is taking the long way to decomposition it will release methane a greenhouse gas much more potent than what comes out of your tailpipe but then in addition to that there's all the labor and the resources that went into growing harvesting transporting refrigerating packaging that lettuce the land that was used to grow lettuce that's going to end up in the trash the water to water lettuce that's going to end up in the trash the pesticides that are going to pollute our waterways for lettuce that's going to end up in the trash wasting food produces so much greenhouse gases that if it was to be compared to a country in terms of emission it would be the third largest emitter after China and the US now the good news is there is something you can do about that you can help solve the climate crisis in your own kitchen and you can save money doing so how much money you're wondering eighteen hundred dollars that's about how much the average family of four throws away every year so I'm gonna give you three tips that you can do at home right now and two bonus tips first one become the master of your refrigerator try to not overstuff your fridge so much so that you will always know what's in it pack your leftovers in glass containers out of sight out of mind right but if you put in a glass container or a clear container you will always know what's in there designate a shelf with a sign on it that says eat me first and put on that shelf the items that you'd like to eat first shop your refrigerator so next time before you head out to get groceries kind of see what's in there and what kind of a meal you can make with what you already have on hand two use your best judgment when it comes to expiration dates for the most part expiration dates are an indicator of food quality not safety this is particularly true for anything that's prepackaged like cereal crackers chips also canned food those will be safe to eat way past the date further than that I myself ate eggs a few months ago that were three months past date and I'm here to tell you about it so try to use your rely on your senses more look at the food see if you see any visible sign of mold smell it taste a little bit of it and if all of that checks out the food is probably safe to eat number three use your freezer your freezer is your best ally against food waste that's because freezing is like hitting the pause button on food in my own freezer some of the strangest things you may find include tomato paste coconut milk a knob of ginger bread milk and you know those eggs I just told you about and you're thinking okay I can do this food waste thing but there's no way I'm eating eggs that are three months past date well you know what you can crack them and freeze them and you'll have them later for a recipe 
It's like a beautiful gift. Anytime you're hungry, you can open your freezer and there's going to be something delicious to eat if you don't feel like cooking. So remember, become the master of your refrigerator. Use your best judgment when it comes to expiration dates and use your freezer. Now, I told you I had two bonus tips for you. If you feel like really becoming um, a guru for reducing food waste. Next time you go to your supermarket, ask to talk to the produce manager and ask them to carry imperfect produce. They're just as delicious and nutritious as their perfect counterparts. And we need to start asking grocery stores to carry them so we can start breaking down the barriers that make grocers believe that we will only buy perfection. This has been done in France with great success. Then, in addition to that, also ask your grocer where they keep the items that are nearing the end of shelf life and are on sale. There's usually a shelf hidden somewhere in the store. We need to make these shelves much more obvious so that we can give more people the opportunity to buy good food for less. You are an agent of change. You have immense power to change the status quo, even in very small ways. If we all did our part and did more to reduce food waste, food waste, each of us has the potential to save one ton of carbon from entering the atmosphere. That's like driving 2,200 miles or 3,400 kilometers if you're from Belgium. So I hope you'll help, help me in this task, help me save the waffle and save the planet. Thank you very much.